Um, in addition to the nursing home package the governor just described, we are also announcing a second phase of funding, $44 million, for our residential service providers who contract with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts across the Executive Office of Health and Human Services who support some of our most vulnerable clients. I want to first thank the providers and their associations, including the Association for Retarded Citizens, the Providers Council, the Children's League of Massachusetts, Jane Doe, ADDP, ABH, as well as SEIU Local 509, who represents frontline and direct care workers in a number of provider organizations, for their strong collaboration with us and on behalf of the clients that they support 24-7 during these unprecedented times. Together, we are committed to safety. This $44 million is specifically to address unplanned for and thus unbudgeted services and items in response to the pandemic, such as increased staffing, overtime, and staffing-related costs, infection control, and personal protective equipment supplies. This, in a, this money, in addition to the first phase of $95 million that we announced on March 30th, brings the total additional support for residential programs and some other purchase of service programs to $139 million during the COVID-19 public health crisis. We will be seeking reimbursement from the federal government at the 75-25% allocation methodology, which could be up to $105 million in reimbursements to the state. Across the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, a number of agencies work with 238 residential service providers throughout the Commonwealth to ensure the health and well-being of over 20,000, in fact, 20,500 individuals, reflecting very diverse populations, including children, youth, and families, and individuals with physical, cognitive, emotional, behavioral health, intellectual, and developmental disabilities, survivors of domestic and sexual violence, and youth in the custody of the Department of Youth Services and Children and Families. Given the diversity and the unique circumstances of each provider organization, providers have taken a multitude of steps to support their workforce and their clients during this time. Examples include offering double-time pay to employees working with COVID-positive individuals or creating COVID-positive units or residential programs hoteling staff working with COVID positive patients, providing differential pay and other such actions. They've invested funding into infection control, including increased housekeeping and terminal cleaning services, plus, plus finding PPE supplies. Therefore, these funds that we announced today acknowledge the actions taken to date and provide reasonable flexibility to providers to meet the specific needs of staff and clients during this pandemic and surge period. However, I want to be clear. It is the expectation that these residential congregate care providers use these increased dollars for staffing, for clinical direct care and support staff, infection control, including housekeeping and environmental services, PPE and other supports, but these other supports have to directly benefit staff. Providers will be required to report to the Executive Office of Health and Human Services on the actual use of these funds. And as you know, and as we have previously stated in press evals, in addition to financial support, the Commonwealth has implemented testing for staff and residents at a range of congregate care settings. And on April 10th began testing at these sites and to date has tested over 450 program site locations. And testing continues in both our nursing homes and our congregate care sites daily. Thank you. Governor?